Goodness and grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone there was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the bed When another died for me There is another in Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. Cause I know, I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another. Me. 
Cause I know that's where you'll be I've got the joy come everywhere Cause I know that's where you'll be I've got the joy come everywhere Cause I know that's where you'll be I've got the joy come everywhere Cause I know that's where you'll be Oh I know that's where you'll be Jesus I can count on you, Jesus. I can count on you to show up. I can count on you to show up, Jesus. I can count on you to be there, Lord. If you promise, Lord, if you promise, Lord, you will be there. 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 You will show up. Thank you so much for joining us. What an awesome time in worship. I believe that this music has blessed your heart and you are lifting up your hands and enjoying the presence of God wherever you are. We never want to complete our worship without giving you time to give because indeed our worship is incomplete if we don't take time to sow into the kingdom of God. I want to share with you a scripture in the book of Genesis chapter number 26, verse number 12. The scripture says, in that year, which was a year of famine, Isaac plowed and in that year he harvested a hundredfold. One of the, the secrets of the kingdom of God is that God blesses us in crisis. Normally, God creates great opportunities in times of crisis. And how do we access those opportunities is that we sow a seed because we can't expect a harvest if we are not sowing any seed. Now, during worship, as we give towards God, whatever we give towards God is like a seed. We are throwing it into a fertile ground of the kingdom of God to sponsor the work of God. And when we do that, God will bring it back to us a hundredfold multiplied and it will work in our lives in an amazing way. Here's one of the things that we know as a testimony of people who give is that God is always able to cause your money to do more than what you keep for yourself. So as you prepare to give today, I want to encourage you, don't keep what you have. Share it with the church. Share it with the mission of the kingdom of God. And God will take what you have given and multiply it and cause it to do more than you could have kept it. So as we get into this time of giving, maybe you have a seed. It is not a harvest. It is not too much. It can't even help you to achieve the dreams of your heart. And here's what you can do. You can take that as a seed. Give it to the house of God. Sponsor the kingdom of God. And as you do that, God will take that seed and multiply it and bring it into your life. 
life and give you more than what you have given so that you have what you need for you to pursue the dreams that God has set in your house. There's never a disadvantage in giving towards the house of God. But here at Hillview Church, we always encourage you, give as the Spirit of God is leading you. Right now, I believe as we've been worshiping, the Holy Spirit is leading you. This platform is positive, it's empowering, it's inspirational, and we don't take your money and misuse it. We use it to empower your life and help you live for God. This is a very difficult time for the kingdom of God, and the devil wants to use it to destroy the church and to destroy things that can build your life of faith. Here's what I want you to do. I want you right now to make sure that you take your time to give, and when you do that, God will bless you. Choose to stand with your church and give towards it and the Lord will bless you and take you to another level. Thank you for staying tuned. Next is going to be the word of God. It's going to empower you and strengthen you in your love with God. We love you. Take your time to give. Well, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for welcoming me into your life, into your cell phones, into your mobile and social networks, into your living room for me to share this word with you. I've got a very, very pregnant word in my spirit that I want to share with you that can change your life, especially in these trying times of COVID-19. 2020 has been one of the most difficult years that um, people have seen all over the world. It's not an issue that is isolated to Africa, it's not isolated to America, it's not isolated to the, to, to the UK. We all have experienced how 2020 has been very difficult, especially with the, with the, with the advent of um, uh, COVID-19. I wanna share with you, you know, and understanding, especially from the local perspective here in Botswana, that a lot of people have had so much hardships. We had a lockdown that lasted for more than three months where people could not trade. People could not go and do business. People could not go and marry. People could not even bury. We lost our loved ones all over the world. We lost our, our loved ones even here in Botswana. So if I'm to tell, to, to tell you that today, I want to share with you a message entitled Thankfulness. You probably wonder, what, what is it that I should be thankful for? What should I be thankful for in 2020? Now, I want to I share with you a process of how to be thankful because it's a process. Once, you, once you've gone through this, this, this message, then you understand that there is a process that you can undergo that can help you to be thankful in your life, regardless of the situation, regardless of what COVID-19 has done, regardless of whether you lost your job, regardless of whether you are sick, regardless of whether you lost your loved ones, regardless of the status of your relationship, you can still be thankful for something in your life. So I take this opportunity to share with you this, the, the, this time, or wherever you are, you might be, because uh, it's a Christmas, uh, Christmas season now, you might be at the kettle post, you might be uh, uh, somewhere uh, 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 laying around, playing with your family, you might be at home, because a lot of us have been told not to travel. So I'll take this process step by step so that you can be able to understand the process of being faithful. Okay, so let's take a look at Paul. Paul is in prison. And he's writing a letter to the people in, 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 in the, uh, the, the Philippians. And he's saying, in all things I've learned to be, uh, to be content. This is in Philippians chapter 4 from verse, uh, from verse 11 to verse, to verse 13. This is a very, very, very full message because remember I'm talking about a man who's in prison and he's writing a letter to this church uh, telling them about being content. Now, being content is the first step towards the process and the, and the art of learning to be thankful in every part of your life. What is being content? Paul explains it this way. He says, I'm not talking about the need, but I'm talking about being able to be content with little or with more, whether I'm hungry or I am full. But in all things, I have Christ who strengthens me. Now, a man who's in jail and whose life is not sure as to how it's going to end, and we all know how Paul's life ended, talks about being content with the little that he has because he's had more before. Now, content doesn't mean undermining what is around you. Content, contentment doesn't mean undermining whether your body is sick. It doesn't mean undermining the fact that you might be broke. It doesn't mean undermining the fact that your loved ones might have left you or maybe you're going through a divorce. It doesn't mean undermining the fact that maybe you have been struggling to pay school fees. Contentment doesn't necessarily mean the absence of issues in your life. But I want to talk to you about a position of being content that no matter what is happening around you, there is something that you are thankful about. That is being content. Because you've experienced uh, 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 abundance before. You've experienced the life of plenty. 
But now when you're going through the, plan, the, the life of nothing, you need to be able to understand that there are small things that you have to be thankful for. Now, these are a couple of things that a lack of contentment by bring in your life. A lack of contentment in your life literally makes being thankful a very difficult process. Because there's what happens. When you don't have contentment in your life and you're, you're not satisfied, you're not calm, you're not happy with the little that you have or the more that you have, it will breed a lot of instability in terms of appreciating the little that you have. That's the first thing that lack of contentment will cause you. Number two, lack of contentment will affect you in three ways. It will affect your emotions. It will cause your, your, even the way you feel because you're not satisfied with the job that you have. You're not satisfied with the husband or the wife that you have. You're not satisfied with the kids that you have or the way your kids. You're not even satisfied with the way you look. So that lack of contentment will even affect you emotionally and cause a bit of emotional instability in your life. Paul says, I've learned to be content in everything, in more and in less. Whether my, whether, if you are a lady, whether you are able to afford to buy Brazilian hair or not, if you are a man, you are able to buy a, a Land Cruiser or not, you've learned to be content in the little squash cara or scale that you have. So it will affect your emotions because now your emotions are basically based on whether you have or you don't. Your emotions are basically based on whether the next person has something better than you or, you, or, or better than you or they don't. Content, lack of contentment will also affect your body. So, you know, sometimes some of the diseases that we have these days are caused by the red race that we live in, the ability to chase the next big thing, the ability to chase the next paycheck. And it also affects our systems. In the way that you find that your BP is high, your sugar levels are high, and these days we even have kids, people who are below 30, struggling with heart diseases. How do we explain those things? These are a, a result of lack of contentment. Lack of contentment can also as, a, a, a affect your spiritual telescope. You start to focus on things that are not necessarily the heart of God. You start to focus on things that really to God, they, they, really, they really do not matter. I'll give you a typical example. If you are someone who has been committed before in the things of God, once you lose your level of contentment, you start to focus on what the world wants you to focus on. And then you lose sight of what is important. Your spiritual telescope is shifted towards things that are not necessarily important. Check yourself. Check exactly your level of contentment, how it is. Are you content in your life? Are you content with the way your life is? And remember, when we say content, we're not saying you are happy with the status quo. We are saying you appreciate it, but there are things that you are able to appreciate as things that you have achieved. You are, not, you, are not, you are not necessarily neglecting the fact that your body might be sick or you might not be having money in your account. And, con and, and, and contentment doesn't necessarily mean being lazy to do work. You don't just sit and say, I'm content. Okay? You work in terms of what you do with your hands, but knowing that you're not working, you're not striving. Your activity in terms of what you put into work is not to compete with anyone. It's not to compete with the next person. It's not to try and prove a point. You're working with contentment and your, the results that you get out of contentment normally are even better because you're, 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 you're literally competing with your past results, not necessarily the result of the next person. So contentment is a very, very important step towards being thankful in this beautiful festive season. Look around you, wherever you might be watching this message from, and, and look at the things that you've managed to achieve, whether you are with family or even if you are alone, you didn't manage to go home. You might be thinking, I should be home, I should be with my family. You know, you are seeing people on Facebook putting up their status, doing bribes and, and whatever, and you, and, you, and, you, and you are building a little bit of jealousy in you. That's another thing that lack of contentment is able to do. It breeds jealousy. And when you are jealous about anything, that, is, that means you are envying another person's uh, material possessions. Do not be envious in your life about other people's material possessions. And that is what lack of contentment can also bring. Now, let's come back to the center of the message. What process should we be able to take for us to be able to be thankful during this festive season? It's very, very important that we recognize, even as we have this myriad of problems around us in terms of the COVID-19, uh, we're having earthquakes, now we have the rains that have ruined our roads. Uh, you know, some of the people who are supposed to be going north have not been able to go home. But in all of this mess, we need to be able to find something to be thankful, for, uh, thankful about. And I want to help you, wherever you might be, I want to help you to take a walk with you, to take a walk with me in terms of learning how to be content. 
this is going to be a very, very exciting exercise. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Hello, family. I have very exciting news I want to share with you. Hillview Church has the privilege of launching a new single called Love Amazing. Indeed, the love of God has been so amazing to us in this year of the pandemic. But God gave us the grace to write a song, provide the melody for it, and then bring it up. It's going to be so hot, 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 and I don't want to miss it. We are launching this song. It's going to be amazing. And this song is going to be available on iTunes and on Spotify so you can download the song there. It's going to cost you, for those of you who are interested in having the physical CD, it's going to cost you 100 dollars. We are encouraging you from now onwards. You can book by the information desk when you come to church for a physical CD. It will cost you 100 dollars. And please don't miss this exciting single. We are offering it to you in three versions. You have the radio version, and then you have spontaneous worship version, and then you have the instrumental version that you can enjoy. And I can tell you, you don't want to, to miss hearing the instrumental version. I like it. Especially when you put it in your car and you increase the volume and you hear the bass on it. It's gonna rock your world. Don't miss this offer. Make sure that you order it. And God bless you. I take this opportunity to just welcome you back to this session and uh, maybe just to give you a quick recap we're talking about uh, thankfulness and we've just talked about that one of the building blocks of being thankful is the ability to be content in every situation as we've seen uh, the great Paul in his Pauline letters to the, to the Philippian uh, church that he had learned to be content in everything now I want to take us through a process of, 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 of being thankful one of the first things that I have manage to, to, to learn to do when you are in the process of being thankful and if you are failing to understand how to be thankful in this time in these difficult times around the world one of the first things that you need to do is to be able to isolate and now and i'll go i'll go a little deeper into this thing isolate areas in your life or activities in your life or things in your memory things that have happened to you that you think and you can rank them from one to ten as to which of these things should i be thankful about and why and I'm going to help you a bit in terms of what this is important. You know, there's a song that sings, count your blessings and name them one by one. One of the things that we've understood about the Bible in terms of studying the Bible is that numbers are very, very important and naming things are very, very important. So when you say count your blessings and name them one, more by, one by one, it's quite key to the process of being thankful because you're able to take things that have happened in your life. Some of them might have been very, very bad events. I'll give you a typical example. One of them could be the fact that you were supposed to go and study overseas before COVID-19. When COVID-19 came through, your, probably your, 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 your scholarship was, was suspended based on the fact that COVID-19 had hit Europe and it hit the, the Americas and they could not bring people from other, from other nations. And when you look at how COVID-19 had hit Europe, starting with Italy and going through Spain and all of those other countries and how it hit the America. You might actually be thankful to say, Lord, in as much as I didn't go and study in Germany or I didn't go and study in the UK, I didn't go and study in Italy, thank you. Thank you that you didn't approve that scholarship at the time. Because imagine, you might could have been a statistic of people who actually got this, the first strain of COVID-19 and maybe you could be dead. So isolate. When you isolate, you take issues individually and you say, Okay, I know I'm having a difficult time with my partner. I know I'm having a difficult time at work, but at least I'm still working. So you isolate these issues and say, these are things that I think they will range in the level of being thankful for. You can take your family, for example. You know, some of, some of the, one of the, the, the biggest mistakes we make in the process of being thankful is that we take some things for granted. You might be taking your wife for granted. You might be taking your husband for granted or your kids for granted. There are people right now who are failing to conceive, but you might be having about two or three kids. There are people who are struggling to get married, and we have a partner who loves you and you don't even appreciate the fact that they're there. So you take these issues and you isolate them. You, you don't bug them together as family. You take your wife, you put her there, and you appreciate each and every little thing about your husband or your wife or your business partner. You take the little business, if you are running a little small tech shop, and you say, you know what, at least I'm able to make a days a day, a, to meet the demands of the day or the demands of the month because of this little tech shop that I have. Some other people don't even have the capital to start the tech shop, but you have the strength to start the tech shop. So you isolate the tech shop and you start to say, you know what, without this tech shop, I will not be able to buy food for my family. So that isolation. You take your family, you take your wife, you take your kids, you take your brother, you take your sister, you isolate. 
and then you 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 learn to you 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 try and see on each and every one of these elements how important they have been. Number two, you appreciate once you've isolated. So you take her, you take him, you take it, whatever it is. You isolate it. Number two, you appreciate it. And appreciation is not just a matter of words. Okay, it's a, you can appreciate by actively doing something for him, for her, for it. You know, these days you are able to appreciate things on social media, on statuses, you are able to appreciate uh, things on, on a variety of things. Okay, you can even speak to him, to her, or to it. Appreciate. Because the moment you start to appreciate him, her, or it, you are causing a response from that, from that end. So once you've isolated, and you have to do it for each and every one of the elements that you've isolated, you can take about five of them. And then you appreciate each and every one of those elements. Okay, some of them might be objects. You might be having a vehicle that you've been struggling with, but you, you, you might say, you know what, without this car, I wouldn't have managed. I know from experience, we, we, we purchased a vehicle, my wife and I, and, and uh, you know, we, we managed to really start building our own property in terms of our own house, and we went, went into an accident with that vehicle. It's only after that accident that we realized, you know, without this car, we wouldn't have managed to go how far we have gone with the, with the project. So we have to actually appreciate that vehicle. Now we are fixing it. But what I'm simply saying is once you've isolated him, her, or it, then you appreciate him, her, or it. Okay? So that's, that's a very, very important process that you need to be able to understand how to, how to, how to, how to go through the process of, the, of, being, of being thankful. Number three, celebrate. Once you've isolated him, her, or it, you appreciate that object, and the third thing that is very, very important is to celebrate it. When you celebrate something, you cause an emotion, the hormones that your body even produces that actually amplify your thoughts about that particular thing. So in as much as we have so much of issues around us, around the world, this Christmas season can be, have a very different element in terms of you being able to localize, isolate, appreciate, and celebrate a particular thing in your life. Some people might be saying, uh, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. But the fact that you have a voice, the fact that you can taste food, the fact that you can even hear, appreciate your body, your, the fact that you can, you can even think, the fact that you can even process the words that are coming out of my mouth, is very, very important for you to be able to celebrate those little things. That is very, very important. You know, in the Hebrew culture, in the Bible, as we've seen, they would celebrate almost anything. They would have the feast of what? The feast of this, the feast of that. Celebration is a very, very important thing because it mimics or amplifies the heart of God in celebrating what the relationship that he has with people. That is very, very important. The, third thing that, the fourth thing that is even more important is if you go back to the, chapter, the scripture that we read, the Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13, Paul, Paul ends that scripture by saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The last thing that you need to do is to recognize the empowerment. Okay? So we've said you isolate him, her, or it. Okay? You appreciate. You celebrate. The most important thing in terms of a covering on that, on that object or in that process is to recognize the empowerment. And the empowerment in everything in our lives is Christ who strengthens us. If it wasn't for Christ, your body would not, would, not, would not be healthy. If it wasn't for Christ, your family would not be, wouldn't have survived the COVID-19. If it wasn't for Christ, right now we're going to the uh, festive season, you would not have survived or your family would not have survived. If it wasn't for Christ, you'd be in tears right now. And if you are in tears, Christ is available and Christ is more than enough to be able to comfort you. You know, when you look at the news, when you're watching uh, whether the international news or you're, you're watching the local news, all you hear in there is a lot of negativity in terms of what this festive season is going to be like. In the world, around the world, we're hearing about a new strain of the, of the COVID-19 spreading in the festive season. And we've also been told that we're going to have another, another huge uh, a spike in terms of the numbers because of people traveling across the world and people traveling locally. But I want to encourage you, my brother, I want to encourage you, my sister, that this is a time and a season for you to be thankful no matter what the situation is. It's very, very important because without being thankful, then what else do we have? And Christmas is a time for you to be able to be with your family and to celebrate and be thankful for the little things that the Lord has given you.
And I'm going to give you a quick recap in terms of the process of being thankful. We've said that the foundation of being thankful is contentment. Being happy with where you are and not being jealous of other people. Being happy whether you have or you don't. That's contentment. And we've said the process of being thankful entails four, process, four, four elements. You have to isolate small things or elements in your life, whether it's family, whether it's your car, whether it's your health. Appreciate the status of that, of, of that, of that. Well, no matter how, how deteriorating it might be. Learn to appreciate it. Celebrate it. Celebrate it, no matter how little it is, whether it's a small tech shop, whether it's a big shop, whether it's a small car or it's a bicycle. Appreciate the fact that you have shoes. Appreciate the shoes that you have. The third thing is to recognize that Christ is the one that empowers you to achieve all things in your life. And if you're sitting there and you're saying, Stokes, I don't know who Christ is. I've never met him. I don't know who you're talking about. I want to encourage you to say this prayer with me. This is not a, a magical or, 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 or goosebump thing. It's a very, very important process in your life. And if there's someone next to you who's a Christian, I'll ask that they say this prayer with you to encourage you and strengthen you because you are about to make a commitment for you to become a child of God right now. And it's very, very important. It's a very, very important moment for your life. You will never regret this, my brother and my sister. Say these words after me. And after you've said these words, believe you me, inside your heart, you are converted and you are a child of God. And the Holy Spirit testifies with my spirit and with your spirit that you've given your life to Christ. Say these words. Say, Jesus, I give my life to you. I forfeit my past and I turn away from all my sinful behavior and my sinful ways. Today, I am a child of God as I give my life to you. Accept me as, as I am with all my weaknesses and all my faults. And today, I'm a child of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Well done, child of God. Congratulations. I want to celebrate this with you. And if you've given your life to Christ, the numbers on the screen are for our church. You can be able to look at those numbers, call those numbers, or even um, uh, WhatsApp those numbers. They will be in touch with you to take care of you and help you walk the life of Christ. It's a beautiful walk that even during times like this, you can be content, you can celebrate, you can recognize Christ in your life. I'm so excited about this festive season. I hope you guys are also excited. Let's go out there and and bring the spirit of being thankful with the family members that we are with. Enjoy the Christmas, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Thank you very much for watching.